Our Sun is perhaps one of the most impressive objects in our solar system, with humans studying this object for thousands of years. At a mass 300,000 times that of Earth's, your weight on the Sun would be about 30 times that of what it is here on Earth. But the most curious thing of all is that our Sun isn't a big star in the grand scheme of things. Uy Scuti is one of the largest known stars, at 1,700 times the radius of the Sun, large enough that the outermost part of the star, the photosphere, would contain the orbit of Jupiter if it was placed where the Sun is. So if these stars can be as large as this, what is the theoretical minimum that a star could be? We see plenty of large planets like Jupiter, so where is the point in between Jupiter and the Sun at which a star can form? First off, let's define some terms in our question. In terms of size, we are looking for the smallest in radius, as stars can have very different densities depending on what they are made of. The other thing we need to define is what constitutes a star, as there are many different types of star, such as neutron stars, which can theoretically be only 20 kilometers wide. In this video, I'll be looking at main sequence stars, which are stars that produce their energy by nuclear fusion, which removes neutron stars, as these are made of closely packed neutrons formed after a large star has collapsed so densely packed, in fact, that a teaspoon of neutron star matter would weigh 10 million tonnes. Anyways, back to main sequence stars. To understand the limits of how large or small a main sequence star can be, we first need to look at the conditions required for nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion, not to be confused with nuclear fission, which is how nuclear power plants work, is the combining of small particles such as hydrogen to make larger particles such as helium, releasing energy in the process. Nuclear fusion is a huge area of research in physics, as it releases much more energy than nuclear fission, and doesn't leave us with radioactive waste, which needs to be stored and moved to designated sites such as in the Nevada desert, where it can stay radioactive for many years. The problem with fusion, however, and the reason why it's taking so much research to become sustainable, is that it requires an incredibly high temperature and pressure, essentially requiring us to simulate a mini star on our planet. The reason for these conditions is down to the fact that fusing hydrogen together requires that positively charged protons are brought very close together, kind of similar to how we all try to force the poles of a magnet together as a kid. They repel each other. In a star, these conditions are met due to their incredibly large mass, and hence strong gravity, which causes the high pressure and temperature. So to understand the limits on how small stars can be, we need to look at the balance of how much heat and pressure nuclear fusion requires, and how much gravity, or size, is needed to provide that. Luckily, huge amounts of data and analysis collected in the 18th and 19th centuries culminated in what we know as the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. This plots stars on a graph of luminosity, which is a measure of how much power a star produces and scales with mass, against temperature or spectral class. What we can learn from this diagram is that our main sequence stars form a line through the middle, so higher mass stars have a higher surface temperature. Our smaller stars should be in the bottom right of this line, and predictions based on our knowledge of the workings of stars estimate that the lower limit at which a star can still have fusion occurring is 75 Jupiter masses, or 7% of the mass of the Sun. This is only theoretical though, with one of the smallest stars ever recorded, catchily named EBLMJ055557 AB, being just 85 times the mass of Jupiter, or 8% of the mass of the Sun. However, as stars are much denser than gas giants such as Jupiter, this star is comparable in size to Saturn, with a diameter only around 9 or 10 times larger than our Earth's. So is this the smallest star in our universe? Well, researchers are still searching the skies for objects of interest, but it's hard to tell whether these low mass stars are in fact hydrogen fusing stars or a controversial category known as brown dwarfs, which are unable to fuse hydrogen for extended periods of time. It does seem like we are close to our theoretical minimum though, and I guess we may be seeing more of these as scientists continue to look for exoplanets and habitable solar systems.